windowed. But I've been putting this off for too long. There is a tale that we need to unwind. The tale of the FLDS. Here we go. Girls rescued from cult leader. This is what I'm talking about, baby. Arizona FLDS girls found in Washington Airbnb. Let's do this. First tonight, disturbing new details about a group of FLDS girls who escaped from Phoenix area group homes and were found by deputies hiding in a Washington State Airbnb. New documents are revealing how he's been able to coerce these girls and wives even while locked up. True Crime Arizona's Brianna Whitney has been digging into this. What have you found? But just like the infamous FLDS leader Warren Jeffs, Sam Bateman's power hasn't been stopped by prison. Eight FLDS girls vanishing from Arizona group homes on November 27th and going on the run, allegedly for the self-proclaimed prophet they follow and are connected to, Samuel Bateman. There's always the guys out there that are just ready to pounce and ready to pray. Arizona's family special correspondent Mike guy? Ruckus has convicted of sexually assaulting underage girls he took as brides in his cult with allegations of many more illegal marriages and sex abuse. While Jeffs is serving life in prison, documents show Bateman has started his own offshoot of the religion with he about wanted 50 to get a followers piece. and more than 20 wives. According to federal documents, from May of 2020 to November of 2021, Bateman and his co-conspirators transported these girls from Nebraska to Arizona to Utah and Nevada for sex acts, many of them underage. So Flagstaff, I've been there many times. You don't find the tippity top of humanity in Flagstaff, Arizona. Let me just say that. Is Flagstaff very isolated? Oh yeah. So it has a college, NAU is out there, um, and it's out in the mountains, surrounded by fucking woods. It's cold as fuck up there. There's nothing out there, nothing. Rose Johnson with the eight missing girls. Sam's now a martyr for his little his little cult following, his little offshoot. Walker says this time. Okay, there's no shot that guy isn't trying to start a cult, right? 100%. That guy was either in, is in, or has started his own cult. Last year, he received a call from Bateman, who insisted he meet Watkiss in Phoenix. Uh, I agreed to meet him at a park, had no idea what was going to happen, and it was shocking. Out walked dozens of FLDS women seen in this picture. And he had his family sing us some songs, beautiful choral arrangements, these women and girls singing me songs in the Phoenix Park in their pastel dresses. It was, it was an unusual scene. So you're telling me that this fucking guy... This chump human being has all of these women singing to him, praying to him, professing their love to him. This guy. And the best I can do is this fucking sassy ass little Mexican girl sitting in the other room trying to choke me, biting me. Is that it? Huh? Wife, I'm kidding. Could be harming these girls who even a year later still appear to be under his control. Okay. Warren Jeffs. So this is the guy that we were originally hearing about, right? Warren Steed Jeffs, children, more than 60 convictions in Texas, aggravated sexual assault of a child, Another sexual one. assault of a child, Another rape one. as an accomplice, Another that one. is currently incarcerated. All right, let's read about this ship. In 2006, Jeffs was placed on the FBI's 10 most wanted list for his flight from the charges that he had arranged illegal child marriages between his adult male followers and underage girls in Utah. In 2007, Arizona charged him with eight additional counts in two separate cases, including incest, sexual conduct with minors. In September 2007, Jeffs was convicted of two counts of rape as an accomplice, for which he was sentenced to imprisonment for 10 years to life in Utah. This conviction was overturned due to flawed jury instructions. But he did it though. But because the jury was instructed improperly, well, we can't take any of this evidence seriously. Jeffs was extradited to Texas where he was found guilty of sexual assault of a minor for raping a 15-year-old child bride, an aggravated sexual assault against a child for raping a 12-year-old child bride, for which he was sentenced to life in prison plus 20 years and fined $10,000. Just in case you guys were wondering what a rape is, is worth, it's $10,000. Jeffs is incarcerated at the Louis C. Howledge Unit of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice near Palestine, Texas. An ironic name for a place in Texas, I would say. Jeffs became the president of the FLDS in 1986 and had 19 or 20 wives and approximately 60 children. Former church member claims that Warren has 87 wives. Warren grew up outside of Salt Lake City, of course, and for more than 20 years served as a principal of Alta Academy, an FLDS private school at the mouth of Little Cottonwood 
Hollywood Canyon. Jess became principal in 1976, the year he turned 21. How the fuck do you become the leader of an entire school at the age of 21? Does tenure not exist to prevent shit like this? Oh, good. He was he was known for being a stickler for the rules and for discipline. What do you know? Daddy likes discipline. Prior to his father's death in 2002, Jeff's held the position of counselor to the church leader. Jeff became Rulon's successor with his official title in the FLDS church becoming president and prophet seer and revelator as well as president of priesthood they just gave him all the power that's wild like nobody was like wow should our church leader our school leader and our government leader all be the same guy fuck it why not never heard of separation of church and state i guess ascension to the leadership position caused a split in the flds between jeff's followers and the followers of winston blackmore the longtime bishop of the bountiful british columbia group of the flds church more than half of the canadian branch members left lds church to stay with blackmore as their leader and jeff's excommunicated blackmore in september holy shit this was like a whole fucking thing dude this guy excommunicated another leader. They basically went to war with each other. Dang, man. Following Rulon's death, Jeffs told the high-ranking FALDS officials, I won't say much, but I will say this. Hands off my father's wives. When addressing his father's widow, he said, You women will live as if father is still alive and in the next room. Within a week, he had married all but two of his father's wives. One refused to marry Jeffs and was subsequently prohibited from ever marrying again, while the other, Rebecca Wall, fled the FLDS compound. This is actually crazier than I thought it was going to be, and I thought it was going to be kind of crazy. Naomi Jessup, one of the first of Rulon's former wives to marry Jeff, subsequently became his favorite wife and confidant. As a sole individual in the FLDS church with the authority to perform marriages, the only one, the only one that can perform marriages, Jeffs was responsible for assigning wives to husbands. He also had the authority to discipline male church members by reassigning their wives, children, and homes to another man. What the fuck? Now, with that said, it's tough because these people are giving of themselves. Obviously, they're being manipulated as well into this position, but these are human being adults who are like, you know what? Yeah, I'll let an entirely different random dude come into my life, take away my wife, take away my house, take away my kids. Not, not a court, nothing. This is judge, jury, and executioner of all laws within the FLDS communion. Wild. Jeff's like his predecessors, continued the standard FLDS and Mormon fundamentalist tenet that faithful men must follow what is known as a doctrine of plural marriage in order to attain exaltation. So for those who don't know what the fuck that means, essentially, for the Mormons, you are practicing on a small level, becoming a god by creating life with so many women. That's why they care about banging out and having so many kids. I know, Coyote, it's crazy. Jeff's specifically taught that a devoted church member is expected to have at least three wives in order to get into heaven. And the more wives a man has, the closer he is to heaven. There we go. Confirmation of what I was just saying. I lived in the Mormon community for about a year, and I asked them a lot of questions about their faith, and this is all what they said. This isn't like taken out of context and stuff. This is actually what they told me as well. Before his 2006 arrest, Jeff's had last been seen on January 1st, 2005, near El Dorado, Texas, at the dedication ceremony of the foundation of a large FLDS temple. The ranch came into the public eye in 2008 when Texas authorities conducted a raid and took legally, legal custody of 416 children. They were holding 416 children in response to a March 31 phone call alleging physical and sexual abuse on the ranch. Dude, this is, this is Epstein's Island, but more obtainable. Why go out to an island when you can go to an FLDS compound in Texas? Crazy. The caller claimed to be a 16-year-old girl married to a 15-year-old man. If I was a 16-year-old girl married to a 50-year-old man, I too would fucking call somebody. And stated that she had given birth to his child a year prior. So that means, oh, bro, he was probably banging her out when she was 14. Nevertheless, Texas authorities continued to investigate whether uh, Swinton's claims were a hoax. The women and children who were uh, suspected of being minors were returned after Texas courts established that the state had not presented sufficient evidence of abuse to have removed them. That's crazy that they looked into it and they were like, the first time around, they're like, seems good to me. What's up? What's up, guys? Nothing wrong here. Yeah, 416 girls hanging out, some of them pregnant. No big deal. On June 10th, 2006, 
Arizona Attorney General Terry Goddard told the uh, Deseret News that he had heard from several sources that Jeffs had returned to Arizona and had performed marriage ceremonies in a mobile home that was being used as a, a mobile wedding chapel. That's actually a great idea for a business, by the way. That's that's probably super cool. On March 27, 2007, the Deseret News reported that Jeffs had renounced his role as prophet of the FLDS church in a conversation with his brother, Nephi. Nephi quoted him say, uh, as saying he was the greatest of all sinners. Well, he wasn't wrong about that. Maybe he is a fucking prophet, huh? And that God had never called him to be a prophet. Gee whiz, what do you know? A guy got a high esteemed position in a church because he was believed to be some kind of miracle worker. And what do you know? It was a fucking lie. Whoa, this has got to be the first time in history that this has ever happened. Claiming that God had told him that if he revealed that he was not the rightful prophet and was a wicked man, he would still gain a place in the celestial kingdom. Jeff's also admitted to what he calls immoral actions with a sister and a daughter when he was 20 years old. Other records show that while incarcerated, Jeffs tried to kill himself by banging his head against the wall and trying to hang himself. Like I said, chat, I knew this was gonna be a wild story. I had no fucking clue how wild this was gonna be. Sister and daughter, so he raped them? Yeah, I don't know what they're talking about as far as like sister and daughter. Does that mean, does that, mean that that girl was incestuous? A sister and a daughter? I don't fucking know. Or did he did he bang his own sister and daughter? Is that what he's saying? Jeffs formally resigned as president of the FLDS church, effective November 20th, 2007, in an email <laughs> to the Deseret News. How are these guys keep getting the scoop? He keeps, they, they keep getting the scoop on Jeffs. What's up? Jeffs attorney made the following statement. Mr. Jeffs has asked that the following statement be released to the media and to members of the Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Mr. Jeffs resigned as president of the Corporation of the President of the Fundamental Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Inc. Jesus Christ! That was a fucking sentence, dude. That was his position. Let's, let's hear that again. President of the Corporation of the President of the Fundamental Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Inc. The statement did not address his ecclesiastical position as prophet of the FLDS church, and many of FLDS communities still regard him as the prophet and their current leader. He's in fucking prison for rape, and they still choose to treat him like a prophet and a leader. All right, convictions for sex crimes. We're on to the juicy shit. Allegations. I just want to know the numbers. What's the numbers looking like? Committed when Brent was aged five or six. Brent's brother, Clayne, committed suicide after accuse, accusing Jeffs of sexually assaulting him. Okay. Jeffs was charged in Mojave County, Arizona with sexual assault on a minor and with conspiracy to commit sexual misconduct with a minor for allegedly arranging in April 2001. That's when the towers fell I will remember you. a marriage between a then 14 year old girl and her 19 year old first cousin alan alan let's let's think about that age gap it's only five years but it's five when they're young right so what are you doing when you're 14 we have a son right now that's 13 do you know what he does he plays card games and he facetimes his friends while he plays fortnite that's what he does that's where his mental capacity is at 19. Do you know what I was doing when I was 19? I was in the fucking Navy, traveling around the world, getting drunk and fighting people. So a 19-year-old with that kind of capacity with a 14-year-old girl. Oh, Jane Doe, what is that, four? I always get four and five mixed up. And the younger sister of Rebecca Wall testified that she begged Rulon Jeffs to let her wait until she was older to choose another man for her. The elder Jeffs was apparently sympathetic, but his son was not, and she was forced to go through with the marriage. Wall alleged that Alan often raped her Alan! and that she repeatedly miscarried. She eventually left Alan and, Alan and the community. Yeah, why the fuck would she stay? She was like, hey, I'm willing to play ball, but can we just wait a little bit? And they were like, no. Well, can I'm, I'm willing to, but can we just wait? No, 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 no. My way or the highway. Dude, it's fucking crazy. Jeff's brother, Seth, was arrested under suspicion of harboring a fugitive during a routine traffic stop. 
In Pueblo County, Colorado, police found nearly $142,000 in cash, 7 k worth of prepaid debit cards, and personal records. During Seth's court case, FBI agent Andrew Stearns testified that Seth had told him that he did not know where his older brother was and that he was not to reveal his whereabouts if he did. Seth was convicted of harboring a fugitive. Yeah, he got paid to harbor a fugitive. That's why he had 142 k On April 5th, 2006, Utah issued an arrest warrant for Jeffs on felony charges of accomplice rape of a teenage girl between 14 and 18. Shortly after, on May 6, the FBI placed Jeffs on its top 10 most wanted fugitives list. This guy was getting away with everything for so fucking long that he made the top 10 list. How did this guy not get in the conversation for most prolific rapist? Because although Raynard Sanaga raped more people, he probably helped rape way more people. He was distributing women across the country. And, and it was girls, little girls. Whereas Raynard Sonaga was taking down men. This is fucking little girls. Tons of them. On June 8, 2006, Jess returned to Colorado City to perform, to perform more child bride marriages. On May 27, 2008, the Smoking Gun website released images of Jeffs with two underage wives, one of whom was 12 years old, celebrating first wedding anniversaries in 2005 and 2006. Dude, when we watch things like Abducted in Plain Sight and you hear the story come together and it's a couple people involved, it's like, okay, I guess I can understand how people might be confused or, they, or, or maybe they were kind of gaslit into a situation, but we're not talking about five people misunderstanding some psychopath. This is an entire group of humans across the country. We're talking about churches in this story that opened in Texas, Colorado, Utah, Arizona. This isn't just Utah. Like, like how the country likes to make it seem. This is across the country. And one dude who was, who was paid hush money had 142 k on him of hush, of hush money that we know about. How much more money is out there? How many more kids are being trotted around in those weird fucking FLDS dresses in a fucking Winnebago that's also outfitted for a wedding? So that they can be traveled across the country. And if some dude likes some 12 year old. He'll be like oh I'll take that one. I'll marry her right now. And they just fucking bust out the Winnebago. And marry her right there. This, this isn't the result of something. That somebody was like oh yeah let's try this. This is the result of a lot of money. And a lot of people. Streamlining their operation. Because let's be real. That's what this is. This is a very streamlined operation. Of child trafficking. This isn't. Like what we think where it's like, oh, some guy got a fucking truck and he threw a fucking, you know, blanket over the truck. and He's got three or four kids fucking hiding under there as he crosses the border. No, Th these are fucking custom Winnebago's or trailers or, or RVs or whatever custom made to be mobile churches specifically to marry these girls off as they travel across the country. This is not some fucking slap dick dude grabbing a couple kids, drugging them and throwing them in a truck. This is a system. They're raised to be cattle, which paints this in my mind a lot different because frankly, up until this story, I actually thought most child trafficking was just a dude on the street snatching up a kid, throwing him in a fucking trunk and driving him somewhere. I thought it was disorganized. Oh shit, this is where I lived when I was in Utah. Jeff's trial began September 11, 2007 in St. George, Utah. Yeah, so I used to live in St. George, Utah. That's where I moved when I first went on my parkour journey. I'm not joking. And that's the town you'd like to move back to when we're old? Listen, those pedophiles really know how to build a nice city. Jeff was found guilty of two counts of being an accomplice to rape. He was sentenced to prison 10 years to life and began serving a sentence in the Utah State Prison, citing deficient jury instructions so they reversed his conviction and let him out. What instructions can you fuck up for a jury that you're like, let's just let out this pedophile? Then, Jess was also scheduled to be tried in Arizona. He had entered a not guilty plea. He thinks he's not guilty of any of these things. He has a van that's outfitted to marry children to other guys. And he thinks he's not guilty of anything. This man got a loan from a bank to retrofit a vehicle for rape. And he thinks that there's nothing wrong. I Literally, you can't fucking make it up. Because if I were to write this story, right? Like if I wrote a book about this with these details, everyone would be like, this is such a stupid fucking story. There's no way that a human being would act like this. I don't believe this book. And people wouldn't read it. But here we are watching it happen in real life. He probably paid in cash. Let's be real. Is there a pick of the van? That's a good question. What's it? Rulon? 
Jeff's, was that it? Van? Or is it an RV? Rulon Jeff's marriage van? I want to see this fucking van, dude. How do they not have a photo of it? That looks like my, like my fucking grandma. Is that my grandma? Jeff's tried to hang himself in jail in 2007. On July 9th, 2008, he was taken from the Mojave County, uh, Arizona jail in Kingman, Arizona. That's where my aunt lives. Wow, my family is strangely tied. Pretty close to the story. Huh. To a Las Vegas, Nevada hospital where I lived for a year. Me and this guy have really similar tastes in cities, but said it was serious enough to move him about 100 miles from the Kingman Regional Medical Center to Nevada. Jeffs has engaged in lengthy hunger strikes, which his doctors and attorneys have claimed were for spiritual reasons. Oh, of course. Jeffs was taken to East Texas Medical Center and hospitalized in critical condition under a medically induced coma after excessive fasting. That's the way to go. Oh, man. Well, you know what? I think we've learned enough about this guy's life. Honestly, I knew, again, we've talked about this already. I knew this was going to be a crazy story going into this. I did not have any fucking clue how deep this was going to go, but I'm glad it's over. Can you jump or can you soar? So you gotta learn how it's done.